So we've looked at um, policy and systems change, and we've looked at practice change. And Lorna is now going to help us to think more around her fellowship learning on an individual change level. And Lorna is a researcher and PhD student with Cascade and Decipher Research Centres at Cardiff University. And her research focuses on children's social care across the UK. She works with care experienced young people across a number of projects, bringing her perspective, care experience to herself, and also as a kinship carer. And her 2019 fellowship focused on support for kinship carers in policy. So over to you, Lorna. Hi, Carol. Thanks for that. Um, I'm glad I remembered to unmute myself there because I sorry about that. Um, so I received my fellowship in 2019. Um, I aimed to travel to countries without a history of family-based foster care that were in the process of moving towards family-based foster care and including kinship care in that definition. Um, so I was inspired to do this by having spoke to a lot of um, care experienced young people, but also other people that I met across the sector who all agreed with me that if we wanted to design something, um, we wouldn't necessarily start from where we're at. Um, and quite often we're limited by what already exists and we're constantly trying to tinker around the edges rather than think from scratch about what, what we would like this system to look like. I'm not going to talk about the findings of my fellowship today, which I know is a bit strange, but uh, my fellowship began and then was interrupted by COVID. So a lot of what I'd hoped to do um, hasn't really happened just yet, but I have had lots of opportunities to be involved in change in policy um, in the UK since doing the fellowship, um, which hopefully I'll talk about once I've fully finished the fellowship. Um, but today I want to talk about the impact of becoming a Churchill Fellow and the impact that it had on me and some of the other care experience people that I am involved with and who I know on a personal and work basis. Um, so as a care experienced, I put here, young-ish person, um, yeah, I've tried to use kind of my experience to also amplify and encourage other care experienced people. So I want to talk about kind of three aspects of that, and hopefully there'll be some questions as well afterwards so we can talk in a bit more depth. But I want to talk about empowerment and networks and opportunities um, through the Churchill Fellowship. So firstly, empowerment. So I want to talk about this today because it can be really intimidating being in a cohort of phenomenal people. You know, all of the language around the Churchill Fellowship is these are incredible individuals and actually as an individual, it can be quite hard to feel like you're in a room with these people who have created this amazing impact across the, the sector, not just um, the children's social care sector, but beyond that. Um, so when I first uh, came along to my interview in Westminster, I already felt out of my depth. So not even, you know, having got the fellowship. So when I first considered, I wanted to mention when I first considered applying for the Churchill Fellowship, um, a previous fellow, uh, shout out to the wonderful John Devaney there, um, reached out to me and offered me support with the application, with the interview process. And I don't think I would have had the confidence to put myself forward without that. So I think, yeah, on the first point of empowerment, it's, it's about recognizing that there are people out there who who could be incredible, could be phenomenal, but wouldn't necessarily have that confidence or that experience of those networks to reach out in the first place. So we often ask young people, particularly young people who've had, who've had really difficult experiences in their lives to speak up, to influence, to co-design. Um, there's, no, there's no limit of, of, of people asking constantly for young people to, to, to be involved and speak up and share their voices. Um, but it can be really tough getting to that point, especially if you don't know the rules, you don't know the language, you've never been to Westminster and it's really intimidating. Um, but since becoming a Churchill Fellow, I've been able to reach out to other care experienced people. Um, I've been able to amplify, you know, my voice as a care experienced person um, and show them that they can enter these spaces that we don't always feel are for us. Um, I've managed to connect with and learn from some incredible people who are at the forefront of thinking around how we work in partnership with, with children and families through a lot of my research. You know, I don't think anyone has got it right yet around how we truly share power and how we truly co-produce 
um, our services and our research with with people who who have lived experience. I don't think I think there's so so far to go, like Laurel was pointing out as well there. Um, but I've had the opportunity to present at conferences with people with lived experience of the social work system um, and bring people together and into those spaces so that we can really challenge um, how care experienced and other people are being asked to share um, their experiences and make sure it's not tokenistic. Um, and I think one of the things I wanted to, to talk about in this session was, was just the fact that we, we ask people to come into our spaces, but we very rarely go into theirs. Um, I think it's something that's really struck me um, through trying to encourage young people, um, care experienced people to apply for this fellowship. And actually we've, we've done quite a lot of thinking, I think through the fellowship as well about how we actually reach out to these communities and help them develop the, the confidence and the skills um, in their own spaces, rather than always asking them to come to us and, and fit into our, our mold and our idea of, of what influence and impact looks like. Um, I would give some examples of some of the work that I've done, but it's difficult going going after Geneva and Laurel here. But um, just, it, I mean, they've, they've had longer, I would say that. <laughs> um, to create this impact. But I mean, on, a, on an individual level, um, I think one of one of the the things that have really, really taken away from the fellowship is actually just being able to share my experience of going through the process of applying, of developing an application, of, of doing this work. So I've spoken with, I've helped care experience people with their higher education applications, their work applications, um, applications for research funding, and now, which is really nice, and um, with their applications for Churchill Fellowships. I've had a lot of young people get in touch, young and older care experienced people as well, get in touch to ask what it was like and to ask about the money, to ask about <laughs> how you actually put yourself out there. So I think by being a fellow myself and being very open about the fact that I'm care experienced, I can amplify myself in that space, which allows other people the confidence to see themselves potentially being in that space as well. Um, I'm also doing some work with Kinship Carers through the charity Kinship, so the founder of whom was also a Churchill Fellow. Um, so it's really nice to have that cycle of people supporting each other and, and pulling people up. Um, and they're doing some amazing work with Kinship Carers that helps them develop their own skills before then asking them to go out into the world and do some of this influencing work. So actually thinking, you know, it's difficult to ask someone you know, come along to Parliament and speak about your experience without first explaining to people what lobbying is, what campaigning is, how to speak in public. Um, so I've been involved in some of that work because I'm really, really keen to, to start, you know, with people and where they're at and help them get to a point of feeling confidence rather than being put into these spaces um, that can be really difficult and really quite traumatising for people. Um, without having the, the the skills and support in the first place. Um, so the other part I want to talk about was networks. So I kind of touched on that by saying um, some of the people who reached out to me um, and that I've kind of worked with through this, but I remember being told, and actually Julie said it at the start of this session, so it's quite interesting, but I remember being told when I became a Churchill Fellow that that being a Fellow can open doors. It really does. But it's also an opportunity to bring people together. So this new fellowship stream, I think, gives the opportunity to bring together and amplify the work that care experience champions are already doing. Um, being a person with lived experience in spaces of influence can be really intimidating because there are really high exp expectations on care experience people, not just from outside, but from inside as well. I think we really feel it. We feel the urgency um, around the change that's needed in this sector. Um, I think actually just having the opportunity to be in these spaces and see other people who are doing the work is really, really, for myself, has been really transformational. But I know for other people that I've worked with as well, knowing that they're not on their own, that they aren't the only people seeing that there are problems here and they're not the only people trying to create that change um, is really empowering as well. So I think one of the things that I've been trying to do in my role at Cascade is to think about how we 
work with care experienced people to to build their own networks and their own capacity so for example um one of my colleagues and myself are going up to a conference in edinburgh next week where we're taking some care experienced people um, who we've been co-producing some work with to present the work at a conference, but also to meet other young people and learn from them about what they've been doing and actually just create those networks for themselves so they can go off and you know do whatever they want with that. It's not about trying to create people in our own mold, but actually helping them to, to meet each other and think about where they wanna go with some of this work. Um, and the final thing I want to talk about was opportunities. So. I mean, I went to Japan and India um, as part of my fellowship. I, you know, it, it is amazing to have this opportunity to go out into the world with this quite open question of what can we learn and how can we bring that back and create this change at home? Um, so much of, of what is usually done, you know, I work in research and, you know, we have to have a very, very clear idea of, of, of what we're doing and how which questions we're going to ask and the ethics process we're going to follow whereas the fellowship allows you to think about what is it that you want to change and start from that place um which i found really empowering um but many care experience people and others connected to the children's social care system don't have the resources and the connections to, to carry out projects like this which is why it's so important to have this fellowship stream um as I mentioned earlier, there's this huge appetite to hear from people with lived experience, which is great. You know, it, it's amazing that we want to hear people's voices. Um, and I do know people who, who have had fantastic opportunities, but I also know a lot of people who felt absolutely burnt out and traumatized by being expected to speak again and again about their lived experience, often without pay and often without support. So. People say yes, we always say yes, because we know we know how important it is. Um, but I would say that another part of what I've been doing, which is, which has come from the fellowship, but has also come from just meeting more and more care experienced people and hearing the same stories over and over again of how they've tri tried to create change and put themselves into it, but have felt let down by the fact that things haven't changed once they've spoken out. Um, so, so what I, I try to speak out at every opportunity that I can, just to say that these opportunities need to be fair, um, need to be paid, need to be inclusive. Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful that the fellowship, I mean, I know that the Churchill Fellowship has been doing a lot of thinking about how we can be more inclusive and how we can make sure that we're not asking for people's time and expertise without, without reward and without support. Um, so yeah, I, I try and uh, amplify that whenever I get a chance, like now. Um, there are so many people doing this work across the sector and this fellowship, I am, I'm so excited that this fellowship is gonna give the opportunity to, to so many of those change makers um, in children's social care to come together and, and create some of that change that I know we're all desperately looking for across the children's social care system. So yeah, I think, I think that's me in, in time. You didn't have to shut me up, Carol. <laughs>